As a developer, our job is to handle and manipulate data. But data often comes in some very popular formats like raw data, zeros and ones, and JSON, and XML, and SQLite database, all of those kinds of data. So in this training, let's talk about how to deal with XML data. XML data often comes from your REST API or from an RSS feed. Now, a lot of you ask me how to do this. So in this training, let's take that on. This is how the app looks like after this training. Very simple, we will text the data from iTunes, from Apple RSS feed Put that, download all of those XML data into our app. And then we'll learn how to parse the data into foundation object. Put that into a tail view. So that is how, what three steps that we're going to do. Number one, download the XML data. Number two, parse the XML data. And number three, put that XML data on a tail view in iOS. So first step, download your startup project right below this video. I prepare for you a startup project with all the UI, all the source code that I already prepared for you so that we don't have to waste time on that. We just focus on the XML, downloading those stuff. So click the link right below this page. There you go into my blog, enter your name and email so that I send you the startup project, the complete project and some awesome trainings for you all so, so download the startup project right below this video and let's get started. All right, my friend, let's head over our uh, startup project and let's have a look. In the main storyboard, I already designed for you some very simple UI that will have the news title, the date created, the publication date of the news uh, item, and then the description, the body of the news. Then inside our XML parser.swift, this is the class. This is a file that has a struct called RSS item. This item has the title, the description, and the publication date, right? And we have a feed parser class. This feed parser class, later on in just a moment, we are going, what we're going to do is we'll download, we'll download uh, XML from the from a server or a REST API, whether which one that you want to use, right? Later on in your project, we will make it generic so that you just have to provide a URL and you're good to go. Then we will, what we do next is we will parse, we will parse the XML to foundation object, which is our RSS item over here. We have the title, description, and publication date. And very important, we will call back the caller will provide a closure so that whoever calls this feed parser will use this feed parser, which is a controller, will be able to get these data, will be able to hand, uh, be handed these data and can use those data. Make sense? All right, so now inside our news tail view cell, very simple, we have the outlet to the title, description, and the date. Then finally, in the news tail view controller, we just, we don't do anything as much. We just have the tail view to be um, estimated row height and then row height, all of those things, and very simple implementation of the table view data source, like that, right? So we'll do everything from scratch. So step number one, let's create our XML parser over here, the feed parser. I'm going to make this thing a subclass, a subclass of NS object, a subclass of NS object like that. Then inside here, because we are going to use now in order to parse XML, we are going to conform to a protocol called XML parser delegate. What this delegate does is that we are going to use an instance of the XML parser, XML parser. Then we'll make this class the delegate of that XML parser. Then the XML parser will load up the file, will get 
your data, your XML data. And then what it does is over here, I have an example of our, our SS feed. We're going to have the feed from Apple. And if you look at this, if I click into one feed, we have this is the developer's news. It is in XML over here. You can prove that because we have the XML version is 1.0. Then I put this thing into a tree viewer, an XML viewer tree view. And you see that the RSS is this guy, the version here, it used 2.0. Then each of these, if you know about XML, it's pretty much like HTML, right? It has tags and it has, instead of like in JSON, it has key value pair. Here it has the tag and then the value. Right, so here we have the tag item, and then inside this tag item, we have the title, we have the link, we have the description, and we have the publication date. How cool is that? Right now, one very important thing to notice is that the XML parser, because it parses, it parses the file, the XML file, so it will read from one line to another like this. And what this XML parser delegate does is it will stop at some point that you tell it to. So for example, it has methods that whenever it stops at one tag like this, it stops at one tag, it will parse it. It will cause that method. Then when it reach the closing tag, it will also cause another method. Okay. So for example, I have a tag something like this feed right an xml something like that and then i have the close tag like that right inside this feed we have the news and then another one the close tag right and then inside here we have different item here i have one item and then another item i'm sorry the closing tag of the item and inside here you have different things so what this XML parser delegate does is whenever it reach a opening tag, it will have one method gets called. And that method, if you click over here, it has something like parser this start document. So an XML, it's called a document. This method will get called when you start parsing. And then parser that end document when you stop parsing, when it's successfully done, it will, or it just ends parsing we get this method called. And then it has some method like if you go down here, um, let's see, here, this method over here, optional parser that end, that start element, element name with a namespace URI, qualified name, these things, this is when it reach the start, the opening tag. And then when it reach the end tag of that tag or any end tag it will get called now what what's interesting is we have this element name which is the tag and we could check for it right we could check for it because if it is a legit xml document then we know that if it reached the starting point of this item then when you reach the end of another closing tag it should be this item right but the problem is because we are parsing it's read one line after another so we need a way to keep track of that parsing so every time it reaches the opening and then it reach the end so in the between here we need some way to to keep track of that right so to do that i'm going to have a few variables here to keep track of the parsing number one let's have an array a private var array of rss items which is an array of rss item like this you see this the shocked and that is equals let's say that is an equals to an empty array of rss item cool oops i just delete this <laughs> all right private is private like that next thing Next, let's have the current key, the current private var, the current key, or you can do that as tag, but in the XML parser delegate, it's called an element. So let's call that an element. It is an empty string. Let's just put that by default to be an empty string. 
Next up, let's have a private var called current title. Current title, which is a string. Let's put that by default an empty string. Then we have the current description. You know the drill equals to an empty string, right? Because we have the title, description, and publication date. So we need some variables to keep track of those things. So private var current pub date is a string equals to that right and the next thing is cur uh, yeah that's that should be good to go all right now these are not enough because what happened after we are able to ex put all of these RSS items into this array well we need a way for our Kongla the one who uses this feed parser to be able to come back and deal with these data. So to do that, I'm going to have a private var called parser completion handler. This is a closure and the prototype of this guy, the 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 uh, what's that? The type of this type, or we call it the prototype or the signature is return void like this. Okay, we have some argument that will return void because we don't have anything to return. But inside this argument is an array of RSS item. And because it is a completion handler, the caller of this will give us the implementation of this function, this closure. So we put that as optional. All right. Okay, now whenever this current title get the set the next step whenever get this current title get dead set i'm going to trim uh, i'm going to trim on the white space on the new line space because there is sometimes that in the description in the text here has the new line has the spaces that is like uh, not proper for our app so i'm going to trim that and to do that i'm going to use current title equals to the current title dot trimming characters and then in this trimming character we need to provide a character set and that is y spaces and new lines cool and then i'm going to copy this guy and then whenever this current description get this set to i'm going to count current description equals to the current description dot trimming characters and let's do the same for our current pub date the set current pub date equals to current pub date like that Make sense? All right. Now, the next thing is let's call our parse feed completion handler. So let's create this thing. I'm going to call it, I'm not calling, but let's create a function called parse feed and Whoever uses this method just have to provide us a URL with the completion handler of this prototype right here. You see that? And this thing will return void because we don't need anything. Uh, oops, we don't need the return void, but just like this. You see, so whoever comes this will provide us a URL and will have the chance to uh, give us the completion handler. All right. Now inside here, let's count self dot parse parser completion handler to be this completion handler. Now you may ask, why is it that we don't just like count the completion handler right inside this thing? Right, because if if you know about the met the completion handler in Swift, you can just call completion handler RSS items an array of RSS items like this inside this, right? But now the problem is that and the problem is that number one downloading downloading this thing takes 
TAM. So we need a callback mechanism. That's okay. But another problem is that parsing parsing the XML document, it is not happening inside this thing. Rather than that, we have to rely on the delegate method of this guy to know whenever we done completion handler. We done parsing the document. That's why we need to keep track of this self.parser completion handler. You see that? So now here, because we need to have a URL session and request in order to download data from this URL. So let's have a request to be a URL request with the URL of URL string is URL like that, right? Next thing, let's have a URL session to be URL session dot shared. Okay, next, I'm going to create a task, a data task from the URL session dot data task. And the one that I'm going to use is with the URL request and then completion handler. Then we just have to provide a request, the completion handler, press enter. Let's make some space here so that we can work on this. The data, we got the data and the response and the error, right? Now, inside this, you can do a lot of error checking, but here, let's keep it simple. Uh, I'm going just to have the guardlet data to be data. Otherwise, if we does get an error, if we does get an error, then I'm going just to print out our error.localized description. And then we are going to return immediately outside of this. If we don't have any uh, if we does have the data, right? If we do have the data and we don't have any error, then let's parse our XML data. To do that, let's have the parser to be XML parser with data is our data. The XML parser is a public API in iOS. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Next up, let's tell this parser that, hey, parser, I'm, I want to be your delegate. And, hey, parser, start parsing this document. Okay? And then also, we need to tell this task that, hey, data task, download the data by calling the resume. Resume method. You see this? All right, now let's implement our mark for the XML parser delegate, like this. There are several methods that we can do. Number one is when we reach the opening tag of, a, of an element, that method is parser did start element with the element name, like that. You see this? This start element with element named. So here we can check. Oh, by the way, we need to keep track of our current element over here. You see this? The private variable. So I'm going to keep track of that. The current element to be our element name, which is this guy. You see? Then we'll check if the current element is an item. And because you see in our XML parser here, we have an item and then the key or the tag is item. And then we have title, link, and description, right? So if it is an item, then we are going to reset the current title to be an empty string, the current description to be an empty string so that we can use it later on, and the current pop date, current pop date, to be an empty string as well. All right. Then, as soon as the parser gets the value of an element, now this method gets called, pay attention, pay attention. This method gets called whenever it reaches this element name. But there's another method that it gets called whenever the parser gets the value of that tag of the element. And that method is parser found characters string like that 
you see then when here we can switch on our current element switch on the current element like this and then we can if it is the case of title then we can do the current title plus equals that string now this thing over here the string here is the value the character inside that uh, each character inside this key over here but we have to make sure that it is the key title and we append the title the string of the title into this guy you see then if it is the case of description then we do current description plus equals our string and finally if it is the case of pop date then current pop date plus equals the string and if it is the case default then let's just break out of this switch see all right now this these two methods get this get con whenever the opening tag gets parsed this method gets called whenever the data inside a tag a string a character gets it right gets parsed then the next method we're going to do is when the parser reach the closing tag when the parser reach the closing tag what are we going to do well this method will get called parser parser did an element with the element name like that so the method above here is parser did start element and then here is the end element right so we need to check if the element name equals equals to an item then let's have an rss item to be an rss item with the title of the current title title current description and current pop date like that right then we need to append this uh, rss item self dot rss items dot append our rss item right you see okay so pretty much that's it that's it that's how you parse it and now after these three methods gets called over and over and over again when it reach the end of the document we'll have an array of rss items right but now when it reach the end of the document we need to call our completion handler to tell the caller that hey we just done parsing the document that's why you see that uh, uh over here that's why you see that over here we have the parser completion handler we keep track of that right so whenever the parser did end document gets called we're going to call the parser completion handler and we provided our rss items and because it can be nil so we might get option of chaining you see all right now the last thing the last thing inside this parser is that what if we have an error well ios get takes care of you where if the parser parse error occurred when there's an error occurred then the parser will count this method and over here i'm going to just to do error dot localize description but what you can do is that you will put up some error message cool so print uh, parse error dot localized description like that you see all right now so that is our feed parser we use an xml parser now let's use this feed parser inside our controller and to do that in the news tail view controller let's have a private var called rss items to store an array of rss item optional like this then inside our view did load inside the view did load let's go to a method called fetch data and then it is a private func called fetch 
data like that and then inside this fetch data I'm going to have a feed parser to be feed parser like that then let's go into the feed parser feed parser dot parse feed with a URL now remember this method the remember the feed parse Pause feed with the URL and completion handle. We put that inside our XML parser, the method we just uh, create, right? So the URL here, you can use this URL that I have for you: https developer slash news slash rss slash news rss. Be careful with the URL, okay? And then the completion handler, whereas we have RSS items. Now things will be so much easier now because we have the RSS items. Then we just have to count self the RSS items to be the RSS items, which is this guy. All right? Let's see. Okay, now the last thing we do is self the table view. And uh, you know what? Let me reload the section so that we will have animation stuff going on. So self dot table view that will load the sections at the section index so we index set with the integer is zero with the animation is left you see this okay but now there's a huge problem going on here there's a huge problem going on here the problem is why is this a closure right the completion handler now if you look and in, into this parse feed this parse feed it all of these closure it happens in a different queue is in a different thread of the main queue and that's good for parsing data for downloading data for processing data but this tail view self dot tail view the reload sections that is ui code and, and by the rule in iOS that you have to implement the UI code in on the main queue. And to do that, we are going to call it operation queue dot main dot add operation like this. And we just put in over here like that. You see? Okay. All right. Now, when we have this thing, the tail view will get reload. At that time, let's implement our tail view data source. Number of sections is one. That's good. Number of rows in the section. So in here, I'm going to guard less RSS items to be an RSS items. Else, now this guard less here only means is that hey, if we do got some, if we do get some RSS item, meaning that this is not nil then it will implement the rest over here and we can use the rss items but if this thing is nil then this else case will get count and here we will return zero because we're talking about tail view number of rows in the section right so if there's no rss items there's no row otherwise it will return rss items dot count because that's what it is right the number of rss items then finally uh well not actually finally but almost done we're almost done so we have the self item at index path here i'm going to cast this cell tail view dq reusable cell as our news table view cell then i'm going to check let if let the cell the item sorry the item to be the RSS items at the index path dot item, right? Because it is an array of optionals. So, oops. So this is RSS items question mark. If we does have, we do have that item at this index path. Let's set the cell dot item to be this item. Now, where is this method? Where's this whole thing? So the news tail view cell here. Let's have a var count item is RSS item like that. 
when will this guy get the set what do we do well we just set these date label title all those things so title label dot text to be the item dot title description label dot text to be the item dot description and finally the item dot text uh, I'm sorry the item the date label dot text to be the item dot pop date publication date right all right now the next thing we'll do is we will tell the tail view that we want to return data and that is that all done let's run the project for the first time and see how it looks like here we go this is our app now it takes some time to download it and you see we have everything good to go you see that we have the news we have the date and we have title and the beautiful description here we go. You see? Really nice. Now, um, the next thing let's do, what we'll do next is you see that all of the description, we put that as the number of the description to be zero, right? But it is like kind of like two a lot. So what I am going to do is um, I want to make that by default two lines, just two lines or three lines. And then whenever the user taps onto the cell, tap into the cell like this, it will expand the cell automatically. So how can we do that? There are two things we need to do. Number one, we make this thing two, three lines. And then whenever the user taps onto that, it will expand to all the full description. So in the news tail view cell, opening up the news tail view cell, whenever the description label get the set, we will tell the description label that number of lines to be three. And now when we run the app, let's see. Okay, we run the app and boom. See that we have the number of lines is just three. Then when the tail view did select row at index path gets called. Did select select row at index path gets count we override this right override whenever this thing gets count we're going to tell the tail view that hey tail view deselect row at index path and you made it as true like this then let's get the cell that is selected tail view dot row at index path uh, let cell to be tail view dot cell for row at index path as our news tail view cell then in order to change this because we want to make sure that we change the number of lines for the description right in order to do that we need to tell the tail view that hey tail view begins updates then all we have to do last is cell dot description label dot number of lines to be well we cannot set it right now to be zero so that it will expand full description now pay attention that the number of lines if you set it to one two three four five a specific number not zero then it will be those number of lines but if it is zero then it will put as the full as many lines it needs to this display the full text so here rather than that we do cell dot description label dot number of lines is it equals to zero already meaning that full description if it is zero already we put that return three otherwise if it is not zero return zero right and lastly we tell the tail view dot and update now if we if we run the app and see how it looks like. Here we go. Uh, it takes some time to download. Uh, several reasons. Number one is maybe the network, but I think the network is okay. But number two is it takes some time to pause the document too. Okay. So now if I click over here and it expands, really nice. 
Also, there's a huge two problems. Number one, I don't like the gray, it grays out like this. I don't like that. So let me very fast in the self row at index path over here. Let's do cell dot selection style to be none like this. And if you run it now, here we go. And if you click it, it will not show the gray color, right? But there's a problem. You notice that these, the first two cells, I just expanded, right? I just expanded the first two cells. And then if I scroll up like these, well, these cells, these other news got also expanded without our permission. We didn't expand these, we just expand the first two cells. What is that? What's the problem? Now let's unexpand this, right? Or I will um, collapse these two cells. And if we scroll down, it, will, it seems like everything is okay. But if I scroll up like this, um, if I expand the first one, right? And if it goes down here, expand the first one, it goes down, and it seems like this cell over here, they expand the test, test or limits in test flight. You see this? It's like multiple lines, not three already. Well, what's the problem? The problem is that this method over here, self row at index path, this method over here, because the table view cell, is reused every time get reused right get the queued for reusable so this cell here the first cell whenever we expand it then whenever that cell gets reused then another cell like this will use it the expansion you see that it keeps that reusable of the cell so we don't want that to happen in order to do that we need to keep track of whether the cell is expanding or collapsing so to do that i'm going to the cell class over here let's have an enum called enum called cell state like that and we have two cases case number one is expanded and case number two is collapsed like this you see then inside our news tail view controller let's store let's store our cell state which is a private var cell state which is an array of cell states like that you see this okay nice stuff next up whenever we fetch the data when we fetch the data and we obtain all of these rss items remember that we haven't we don't know yet how many items are there inside this tail view so we don't know how many cell state and number two is by default it is um, collapse right but we don't know how many items are there so whenever we have those items let's do cell state to be the array with the repeating of dot collapse by default and count is rss items dot count okay all right now when we select the tail view when we select the tail view and index path here before we end the updates before we end the update let's tell the cell states that hey this cell state just change from collapse to expanded or vice versa so the cell state here we need to question mark index path row equals to if the cell that description label that text i'm sorry that number of lines if it is equals to zero meaning if the sound the number of lines is equals to zero currently it means that it is already expanded so we are going to return dot uh zero uh expanded right otherwise we return collapsed like this okay then inside our self row at index path in the self row at index path like this we are going to check if 
we do get the cell state to be cell state. Oops, cell state like this. Then let's change the cell description label dot number of lines according to our cell state dot index path dot row, right? If it is equals to expanded, right? Now, if it is expanded, if the cell state that we set for this cell is expanded, then we return zero. Otherwise, if it is zero, otherwise we return four. Okay. Now these are just some like logic. So I hope that you will. I know it's, it's a little bit confusing, but you can just reread the code and you understand. It's pretty simple. Okay. So now if I run the project, and hopefully we will have the expansion correctly gets done. Here we go. Click here. It expands. Tap here. It still works, right? But I click here. And scroll down, down, down. There's no sound at all. It's still three lines. All right, my friend. So that is XML and how you deal with that. How to parse XML data into your table, into your app. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that it is helpful for you. It is valuable for you, and it is information and educational for you. If you love this training, please do me to favors number one subscribe to the channel so that every single week i can continue to deliver free training video tutorials for you right here on this channel for free number two what i would love to do for you is to give you my new tutorial series on how to build real world applications apps like instagram facebook messenger nike e-commerce store app if you love to do that, just click the link right below this video in the description that you enter your name and email then I will be happily to send that video series for you all for free. So my friend, download that series right in the description and I see you in the trainings. Until then, go out there every single day of your life, learn new things, craft your ideas and contribute to the world.